your hands to Jesus and bless him this morning. Give him praise. Let it come from your heart. Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life is the reason that you are standing in this sanctuary this morning. Is the essence of all that we are doing here. So give him praise. Let it come from your heart. Grateful people in Jesus in that church, give him praise and worship. Lord, we honor and we bless your name again. There's no God like you. There's no body like you. You sit in heaven and make the head your footstool. Make sure you are giving it praise with understanding in this moment as you want to receive the word. Lord, I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. We just want to worship you. We just want to bless your name. We just want to bless your name. There's no other God that can be called a father. There's no other God that can be called a friend. Yes, there's no other God that can be called Redeemer. There's no other God that's coming back again. I just wanted to sing about this love, how we love, and how we love. Lift your voice this morning. Jesus, you're the beautiful one. confess again this morning that we love you and you own our hearts we are ready to receive your word we want you oh God to imprint upon our hearts that which you are prepared for this day Lord I submit myself before you this morning and I ask that you take over my tongue and that it become the pen of a ready writer inscribing upon the hearts of your people the truth of your word and by that word let us be transformed from glory to glory in the name of jesus christ lord god as we proceed let your spirit guide us let the entrance of your word give us life for in jesus name we have prayed somebody shout glory please have your seat in god's presence hallelujah before i start this message I want to appreciate God for this great privilege to be standing here before his people, before my daddies, my mommies, my brothers and sisters, uncles and aunties. It's a rare privilege I do not take for granted. All glory be to God. And I also want to thank daddy, you know, for giving me the chance to be here, this small boy standing here. It's by grace. So thank you very much, sir. Somebody please celebrate our father now. Thank you. It's, it, maybe it's your own spiritual father. Yes, it's my spiritual father, but it's also my own biological father. So it's a privilege. And um, God has used him greatly to be of blessing to my life. And I know, sir, in your days, you will see all of us do great things in the name of Jesus. All right, this morning we are going into a very critical matter in our journey as Christians. And this message is titled, The Power of Personal Faith. The Power of Personal Faith. And I would like to start like this. The world is created um, on systems of belief. The world is created. I'm not talking religion now i'm not talking christianity now. i'm just talking about the world as you know it nigeria africa europe is created founded rooted on belief systems and many of these beliefs and that's what we call culture 
are rooted in experiences, patterns of things that people have seen over the time. And then maybe they did certain experiments. They tried one thing or the other. Some people one day, one man took stones, struck two stones together. Fire came. Then like that, we came into what we call the culture of living. And culture operates in every terrain. Culture is like what conditions the way that we live, the way that we think. If I'm a Yoruba person, there is a culture, there is a system, there is a way that we do things. Am I correct? There is a way that we do things. So, it is safe to say that the belief systems of the world controls the things that happen in the world. Am I correct? Are you following me? The belief systems, the things that we believe in, the things that we have experienced, the things that our fathers have told us, the things that we have all agreed is normal, the culture that we have seen, that I have seen from when I was born, fashions the way that I think, fashions the way that I perceive life, fashions the way that I operate. There's a system in Nigeria that naturally conditions us to behave in a certain way. Am I correct? That when you move out of Nigeria, many examples have been made. You imagine that Nigerians who are very disorderly, they get to the United States, they have to cooperate because there is a system of belief. They believe that things should be done orderly. Here, we believe that things should be done God will help us. But the point that I'm trying to raise is this. What you believe in, your belief system has great influence and control on your life. What you believe in has the power to control your life. If you believe that you are small, let me start from there, you will always be small. If you believe that things are possible, things will happen. So, the system of the world in itself conditions what we believe in. And so, if you are operating in the system of the world, you are conditioned to be controlled, to operate within the limits of that belief system. Is somebody still following me? Hallelujah. But somebody say, Hallelujah. But we as believers have been redeemed into a different system. Different from what we see in the world. Are you following me church? We have been redeemed from the systems of the world. And then translated into a new kingdom. And this is where you see the superiority of the belief system of a Christian. When we came to Christ Jesus, the belief systems of the world did not vanish. They are still there. But Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8, what does Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 say? It says, we have been saved by grace, through faith, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. So grace brought us by faith into a system that is governed by the person of Christ Jesus. And now, like I explained before, there is every kingdom, every location has a culture, has something that is governing. Now we must understand as Christians that what governs the God kingdom is faith. What governs the God kingdom is what? Faith. How do I know? Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Hebrews 11 verse 6. Let's read it together, everybody. It's Hebrews 11 verse 6. It says, But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. And he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So if you have submitted to the system of God's kingdom... The only way to operate in it is by faith. The only way to be sustained in it is by faith. The only way to meet up to the God standard 
the belief system, the culture of our kingdom is faith. And that is why you see that the word faith is rife. It is plenteous. It is, in fact, very well discussed amongst us. But God wants to address the problem of the fact that despite the fact that we know or we hear so much about faith, many of us still walk in unbelief. Many of us still walk in unbelief. So like I said, faith is our culture. Faith is what we are built on as believers. That's why we are even called believers. Because we believe in the person of Jesus Christ. And why do we know? No, I started saying that everybody, you must understand that everybody believes in something. Whether you like it or not. Everybody believes in something. You have something that you believe in. That is why you behave the way that you behave. <laughs> but in our kingdom, the kingdom that we have been redeemed into, it says that what we believe in is Jesus. And Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Looking unto Jesus. So Jesus is the substance of our faith. Jesus is what we believe in. Jesus is what we hold to. Jesus is the essence of our faith. And why we are superior to the world system is this. Let me say this very quickly. You know, world systems can change. World governments change. Culture even changes. Am I correct? But Jesus remains the same. Eh? Jesus never changes. He shows you that Faith in Jesus is unshakable if it is truly grounded in Jesus. So while the systems of the world, while the cultures of the world can move and shift place, Jesus, who is the anchor of our faith, remains the same forevermore. Faith, faith, let us understand what faith is. So I'm going to just quickly try to give us some understanding based on what the Spirit of God Open my eyes to see. Let us read very quickly Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. I'm sure you've read that scripture time and time again. But read it again with an open heart. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. I'll read it again. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. If you look at that scripture very carefully, two things are mentioned that faith is. Number one, it is what? The substance. And then the second one says, it is the evidence. Substance, evidence. And then I started to search and say, okay, the Greek word for substance, hypostasis, Gives us this meaning and it would help you to understand faith more and jeer your spirit man. It says that hypostasis is, is interpreted as the foundation of a thing. The foundation of a thing. The essence of a thing. The underlying reality of a thing. That is what substance in that scripture means. And evidence there is talking about proof. If we look at the lawyers in the house, they know a lot about evidence. I think it's even a course that you study. Evidence. Talks about proof, information, facts, data that is gathered to prove that something is true and real. Now, if we will compare scripture with scripture, open with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. Don't forget I said substance means foundation. And evidence means proof or information, fact, gathered to support a belief system. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11, very quickly. It says, For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is who? Jesus Christ. So it means that Jesus is what? The foundation. 
Jesus is the foundation. Follow me. If you go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse um, 19 to 20, you will see it there upon the foundation of the apostles and so on and so forth. And then he ended with saying, Christ being the chief cornerstone. So by that understanding, we know that faith, if you will reread Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, says, faith is the foundation. Now, faith is the substance. Faith is seeing the reality of Christ who is our foundation in things that are hoped for. If you also follow me, Christ's word, the word of God, scripture says in, chapter, um, in, in 2 Timothy chapter 13, verse 16, it says, all scriptures are inspired. So there is no scripture, there is no word written in the Bible that is for nothing. They are all proofs that there is a God who oversees all things. And Isaiah chapter 55 verse 11 says, My word shall not return void, but shall perform. It shall do that which I send it forth. It will accomplish it. So if we would redefine or mix these things together, I, I had to write this down just as the Spirit of God gave me. It says, faith is Christ." Seen in what we hope for and his word about what we are yet to see. Are you following me? Faith is Christ's substance, foundation, seen in what we hope for and his word about what we are yet to see. His word becomes the evidence, the proof when you come to understand this, two things happen to you. Your belief system is jacked up to know that your faith is not an empty one. If you are a child of God, are you following me? Because it is resting on the foundation of Jesus Christ. The foundation of Jesus Christ. Second definition, very quickly. Faith is a spiritual force that produces power to create possibilities and achieve results so faith is a spiritual force and that's why jesus could tell his disciples in mark chapter 19 if you will say to this mountain be thou moved carried and dumped so there is an energy in faith there is a power there is a force in faith that causes possibilities to be that causes us to achieve results. That causes us to enter into the reality of what God has promised us. And the last one that I will leave before we move on to the next subject in this message. Faith is an internal conviction based on the perception of the truth. Based on the perception of the truth that transcends natural reasoning now please listen to this one very carefully faith is an internal conviction an internal conviction so faith does not happen on the outside are you following me it happens on our inside in our spirit man and then infects our hearts faith is an internal conviction based on the perception of the truth and who is the truth everybody Jesus is the truth. So your perception of Jesus should create in you an internal conviction that surpasses natural reasoning. The natural senses of man helps us to reason, helps us to think in a certain way. But this perception of Jesus transcends. It does not, you know, many times we believe that faith is... Um, Losing your reasoning. No. Faith does not cancel your brain. Rather, faith takes you higher than your brain. While you can see it, I am feeling pains in my hand. Faith tells you, by his stripes, I am healed. So it takes you to a different level. Above the natural reasoning that you can see. That's faith. 
And don't forget the title of this message is The Power of Personal Faith. We come to church like this because we have faith. Am I correct? At least there's a certain measure. Because we are gathered here to meet with somebody. How many of us have seen Jesus face to face? Jesus, who can tell me the complexion of Jesus? We don't know. Abby, but we come to Jesus Center every Sunday. Thank you, sir. To worship Jesus, to pray to Jesus. So it's a level of faith. And God in himself supports that we come together in fellowship so that we are edified, so that we are built up. So that iron sharpens iron. But Jesus, now we go to the scripture that was read earlier as our background scripture in Mark chapter 11 verse 22 to 24. And then you see something with me. Mark chapter 11 verse 22. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. Before he said that, something had happened. Jesus was going with his disciples, trying to get into another town, and he was hungry. He saw this fig tree looking all green, and naturally, by reason, you will imagine that there are fruits on it. But he got there no fruits, and he spoke a word. Nobody will eat from you again. And he left. And so when they were coming back, Peter saw the tree. Ah, uh -uh. wow. Rabbi, look at the tree that you cursed. It's already dying. And so he said to them in verse 22 of Mark 11, he says, So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in who? In God. Next verse very quickly. For as shortly I say to you, Whoever says to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea. And does not doubt in his heart. But believes that the things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Next verse very quickly. Therefore I say to you. Whatever things you ask. Whatever things you ask. When you pray. Believe that you receive them. And you will have them. So Jesus was teaching his disciples a principle. Of personal faith here. Jesus was opening their eyes to see. That as an individual. All that it takes. Is, is that you. Personally. You can speak the word. So he makes it clear that. There are possibilities. There are heights. There are realities. If only you. He didn't say us there. He didn't say you and your brother. He said. Whatever thing you ask. Whatever thing you ask, whatever thing you ask, and that's where God is going to be drawing a lot of emphasis in this message. You, 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 in the picture of faith, many of us as children of God, we are dependent on somebody else to ask for us. We are reliant upon the faith of Pastor Abayo Miadebayo. So when you can only get answers until you come to counseling session and he lays hands on you and he prays. So, so many of us, just, we believe it so much. Once pastor prays for me, once I connect with that person, it is done. While that is a level, God is saying, whatever you, you, you yourself, God wants to bring us to a level where we ourselves can ask and we do not doubt in our hearts, and we receive it. And to corroborate this, we look at Habakkuk chapter 2, um, two verse 4. It says, the righteous, the just, shall live by faith. The just shall live by his faith, for emphasis. His faith, not my faith, not your brother's faith, not your sister's faith, not even your wife's faith, who God has joined you together, and you have become one. The just shall live by his faith. First John chapter 5 verse 4 to 5 says, very quickly, First John chapter 4 verse 5 says, Whatever is born of God overcomes what? The world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. Whoever is he, who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the son of God. 
is telling you about the personality, the need for your faith to be personal. Romans chapter 12, verse 3b. I'll read that one in the TPT version. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. And it says in TPT, it says, Indeed, instead, rather, honestly assess your worth by using your God-given faith. So that means there is a measure of a God-given faith that is deposited into every believer. Your God-given faith as the standard of measurement, then you will see your true value with an appropriate esteem. What I want us to see there is that there is a God-given faith appropriated for every believer. And Jesus, in one of these miracles that he performed on the two lepers in Matthew chapter 9, verse 27 to 29, he, you know, he spoke to the two lepers. He said, be it unto you according to your faith. According to your faith. So while God has provided for us a platform like this, where we can fellowship together, you know, in agreement of faith. In fact, God said in his word, if two or three would agree upon a thing, it shall be established, it shall be done unto them. A man that will continually walk in victory must be personally equipped with faith. Because there will be times in your life, there will be junctures in your life when it is left just you and the challenge. Just you and God and the challenge. When you would not be able to, in fact, you will call pastor, his phone will not, you will be switched off. And then you start to wonder what is going to happen. What is going to happen? And then you, people end up in pandemonium and panic. So if you will continually live a life of victory, if according to Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4, you will live. Living here is not just breathing in oxygen. Meaning that you are living a life of fulfillment. Meaning that you are in the center of the will of God. You must do it by your faith. By your faith. By your faith. So as long as you live a dependent life. <laughs> as long as your faith has to be hung on somebody else's own. I beg to tell you, you have not started the journey of faith. As long as you have to wait for your mommy to pray for you before you get results, you have not yet started. And God wants to open our minds. You know, when we come in Jesus Center Church, we, we, one of the things that we say, and that is, you know, our anchor says we are raised up, raising a fresh generation of people who do not only accept the dominion of Christ, but they do what? They take responsibility to manifest it. So that ability to take responsibility to manifest is grounded in what we are talking about today. You personally being able to lay hold upon the word of God and believe it for yourself. God is interested in making everybody, every one of us, small or old. You don't have to be a minister. You don't have to be a pastor. You don't have to come in big regalia. So when you, end, you, you, you don't have to have some mysterious office. God wants to use us in our different facets to display his power, to show forth his glory. But it will only happen by our faith. By our faith by our faith now let me take you again back to hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 so that you begin to you know begin to get to the crux of the matter hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says the evidence and we have been able to understand that that evidence is the word of god and so the degree to which your faith will stand is dependent eh? Upon the amount of this evidence that you have inside of your spirit, man. And what do I mean? If I'm going to a court case, for instance, 
and um, Ayobami versus whoever, what I will gather is evidences. Am I correct? I won't just go there and open my mouth and just be saying something to the judge. Uh, you know, I feel like, you know, I think that I am, you know, I, I believe that it should, I think you should rule in my favor. I'm sure the judge will send you out of the courtroom that you are not ready. When we search through the word of God, what we should do as believers is begin to see the reality of it, the life of God in it, and we are gathering evidences. Now, what do we do with these evidences? We raise them up as a standard against our rationale. So, these evidences rooted in the word of God, faith, being based in these evidences, being the substance, Christ, the substance of it, we start to, when you have a situation that you are confused about, the next thing is not to turn around and be thinking, oh, what do I do? You go into the world and you gather evidences. And that's where a lot of people's faith fail. Many people pray emotionally. They pray with all fervency. They are sweating from head to toe, but with no evidence. Do you get what I'm saying? That means there is no word of God in what they are praying. They are just praying emotion. Oluashe, Oluashe. And then they are wondering, why don't I get results? They are wondering, why don't I see results? Why don't I see answers? Because first, even your own mind does not believe what you are saying. How do I know? Once you have finished the and you pray for like two hours, by the time you get out again, they will say something. You will just use one statement or one action. You can't tie everything. Because your consciousness has not captured the evidence in the word of God. So there is a power in the evidence in the word of God. There is a power in the word of God that strengthens your faith. And that is why by yourself, you have to search the word. Beyond what you hear on Sundays, beyond what pastor preaches to us, if you will stand in faith, if your faith will produce results, you must be grounded in the word. Such much so that you know it like you know your name. You are going through certain challenges, you go into the word of God and you start to look for evidences superior to what you think in your rationale. And don't forget, the word of God is the most superior truth, the greatest evidence ever. So if the doctor gives you a report and says to you, oh guy, you, I think you are going to have to pass, you, you'll be pa pack your load, you'll be passing away in, in, in three months. Set your family aside. Reasoning, they've given you all of the facts. What the power of the word of God does is, it opens your eyes to see the reality that says that with long life, will I satisfy thee? Are you following me? With long life, will I satisfy? And then that word jumps out of the scripture and somebody that has faith lays hold on it and presents it as an higher argument. And that's how your faith is upheld. Many of us do not have a higher argument. That is why we keep crumbling at every challenges of life. Everything that comes your way. You don't have any word in your mouth. You don't have any word rooted in your heart. So the challenges come today, they floor you. Maybe by chance you escape some. And then, ah, hulu, ah, shi, oh, bam, you. There is no sureness. There is no security. There is no assuredness. There is no firmness. There is no rootedness in the word of God. That will change in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. So faith that we are talking about is not just based on empty words or gymnastics. No, it has to be rooted in something tangible. And the word of God is tangible. Somebody say the word of God is tangible. Until the word of God becomes real to you, it cannot have effects in your life. Until the word of God, as you are reading it, it, it becomes real to your spirit man. And that's why we meditate upon the word of God. That is why you keep looking at it until it jumps out in your face. And it's like, oh wow, this is my word. Two people can be reading the same scripture. And they will receive different things based on the inspiration of the spirit of God. Are you following me? That is why it is personal. As I'm speaking this message now, we have... 
tens of people in this place. Different people, the Spirit of God will be stirring them up in different forms as they meditate upon the words that are coming from my mouth. Because that is the area that God wants to attend to in their life. So you see that you cannot just generalize your faith walk and depend on somebody else. Because the both of you are reading John chapter 1, verse uh, 1, John chapter 1. But what God wants to show color day is different from what He wants to show for me. And then it is the reality of what God shows color day that He will run with. So if you by yourself cannot dig and gather your own knowledge, your own evidence, your own proofs in the word of God. The challenges of life will keep tossing us to and fro, to and fro, to and fro. Let me give us a very quick example. This year, God gave us an anchor. He says, I shall flourish like the palm tree and I shall grow like what? Like a cedar in Lebanon. You know, at the beginning of the year, I started to check out the series of anchors that were being reeled out in different churches and after checking them i knew that god was preparing us for a storm but many of us are not sensitive to it god always makes provision <laughs> before any situation He's too faithful to fail. He always, so he, he started, he sent forth his word. Just check it, check, try and pick about five different churches and look at the anchor. You would understand that God was giving us, that's why it's called anchor. Are you, are you following me? Anchor. Something that our faith is supposed to hold on to in the year. But let me ask you, how many of us have held on to this word this year? I shall flourish. We say, in fact, you can close, you can say it in your sleep. I shall flourish like it. And then if you start to check us, after you say, I shall flourish like the palm tree, and I shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon, because it does not come alive in your spirit. As you step out of the church, say, ah, you know, tea pain. Ah. Now, wow, Nigeria are just bad like this. All of us, you categorize yourself with the people that are suffering again. All of us, ah, it's hard. We are asked, God said, I shall. He, he said, he, he, God made, made sure to make it personal. I shall flourish. So many times we hear the word, there is an abundance of the promise of God. There is an abundance of evidences in the scripture. Two things happen. People fail to look for it. One, even if somebody now looks for it and gives it to them. They do not believe it. It does not become real to them. So they continue to struggle with what God has already provided for. They continue to grapple. They are, they, and they are, they are wondering, ah, God, ah, God, can't you see me? And God is wondering, I already gave you the solution. I already gave you the answer. But you are the one that is not seeing it. So many people lose in the battle of faith because their focus <laughs> is not on Jesus. Their focus is not on the word. Their focus, their life is not rooted in the counsel of the Lord of heaven who created them. So a person that will overcome, that will have victory in every area of your life must practice this culture of faith that we are talking about. I can't overstate it. It's not just head knowledge. You know, we have said it too much that it has become head knowledge. Faith, 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 faith. We even call our children faith. But when it comes to the practicality of it, that's why that first definition says, you see the reality of Christ in your situation. You see Jesus enthroned. And if Jesus is enthroned, it says light and darkness, eh? they cannot stand together now. That's what scripture says. Light shines in darkness and darkness cannot comprehend. So if Jesus is in the boat, just like at that time when it was stormy, I cannot sink. If Jesus is with me, Jesus becomes real. It's not just something that I received because my daddy brought me to church. Jesus must become real, false to you. And his word becomes life to your bones. That's how your faith is strengthened. Somebody shout hallelujah. So if you would live a life 
of overcoming faith, if your faith will generate the power that we are talking about, if your faith will produce results, brothers and sisters, daddies and mommies, you must diligently search the word and meditate upon it. The word must become your food. That is where faith is grounded in. A weak word life will produce weak faith. And if you want to grow in faith, if you are desperate to see the supernatural, if you are desperate to do the great things that God has made you for, nobody will need to beg you to study the scripture. You will do it with all fervency. You meditate on the word. Scripture says in Romans chapter 10 verse 17, how do I know? It says, faith comes by what? By hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So, no word of God... No, no what? No faith. So you begin to see, if you start to check yourself now, you can evaluate yourself why certain challenges of life have been sweeping you forth. Sweeping you, you know, removing the carpet from under your feet. Your word life. How much of the knowledge of God is inside of you? How much of the knowledge of God is inside of you? What does the, we are not just talking about reading it in your devotion just for the sake of it so that you can quieting your conscience i have read one chapter of the bible today does it come alive does it translate from logos into rema that is when it becomes active in your spirit man so you must search the world with all diligence i know when daddy was leading us in prayer glory to god you know, when daddy was leading us in prayer, he spoke about something. And that's what I'll mention as the second thing that would help you to strengthen your faith. You know, many times as children of God, as believers, as human beings, we naturally fixate on the negative. Are you following me? We fixate on the negative a lot. Somebody hurts me. You won't forget for five years. You lost one money, one business. It becomes the reason why you are afraid. Let me give you an example. There was a time, how many of us know La Casera now? La Casera was a very popular drink at some time. And then suddenly, one news came out. That, hey, La Casera can open up loco. La Casera can wash toilet too. La Casera can do all of this and that. What happened? Everybody started to run away from La Casera. Till today, some people will not drink La Casera. Even after they have rebranded and done it. Because we fix it so much on it it is it is just our nature as human beings but if you will be strengthened and growing your faith rather than focus on the negative you should focus on the testimonies of the things that god has done what do i mean see many times we are in certain situations you have searched the word of god you believe that this word and then there's still this argument your rationale is telling you oh this thing cannot happen Ah, is it just that simple? When you focus and remember what God has done, you say, it can be done just as God did this one yesterday. Do you know what happens? Your senses shut down because you have provided it with an evidence of something that has happened before. And that is why as believers, we must keep account of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. Not just as a song to worship. Sometimes that song of goodness is a warfare tool to overcome the enemy. When you are in a certain situation and it looks like every road is blocked, you turn back and say, ah, ah, I remember last year, something, something, something happened. And God, ah, ah. or even I remember God did it for my brother. So he will do it for me. And then your faith becomes strengthened. So your focus, your mind, your heart, rather than being fixated, which is by nature, on the things that are negative, that are wrong, upon all of the problems, we complain. We, I, I'm sure that the people that lived before I was born, some of our daddies and mommies went through the austerity period. Abi, Abacha and Co. I heard the story. I, I didn't know anything then. Or maybe I, I don't think I was even born. <laughs> now, if this is, this is the practicality of it. Now we are in a certain condition of economic difficulty. How do you overcome? 
The same God that took me through that austerity prayer. He is still the same God today. Don't forget, Jesus does not change. The same yesterday, today, and forever. So if he could take us through that time, he is definitely going to take us through now. Does somebody believe with me? And that gives you a rejoicing in your heart. You, you, you get to a point you stand. Ah, it has not, um, Pastor Adinle was teaching us in a Bible study, great Bible study that Thursday about um, faith in an economic life. And he said it has not gotten as bad as people killing their firstborn now. Has it gotten that bad? But there was a time in history that some people, because of how bad the economic condition was, they were killing their children. Children, be, human beings became meat. But God saw them through. So that same God, is he dead now? No, he's not. So your faith must begin to picture. As you are looking into the future, you are also looking upon the goodness of God, the things that he has done. And then your faith comes alive. Is somebody following me? Shout hallelujah. Now, scripture says that faith without work is dead. <laughs> Faith without work is dead, empty, lifeless. So you don't just receive the word. You don't just meditate on it. It jumps out. Yes, that is good. That is one level. Clap for yourself. Glory to God. Victory comes by confessing what you say, what you have seen in the word, boldly. So a speaking faith is a winning faith. If you see something in the world, if you are convinced about something, let, let, let me bring it down to, you no, know, I'm, I'm trying to bring it out to because it's a practical matter. If I am convinced that Ronaldo is the best player, I will argue it from today to tomorrow with my friends. Because I am convinced. Whatever you are convinced about, you speak about it what? Boldly. So if you have meditated on the word and you have become convinced in your heart what it should translate into is a bold confession so it means that you cannot tell me you have faith and you have received something from God and your mouth is short it's a war of words the devil is speaking to your mind say you you will die of sickness you, and, as I, and you can't sleep and then you are shutting your mouth I've read the word yes yes uh, uh, I believe it you are not saying anything back I beg to tell you that person may die. But whatever you see in the world, whatever evidences, you don't pack evidences and keep them in your pocket. Is somebody following me? You don't pack evidences and keep them in your book or put them under your table. You use them by proclaiming them by speaking the word. Somebody can't speak it for you. You have to speak it by yourself. By yourself, with your own mouth. By our own mouth, confession is made unto what? <laughs> unto salvation. So if you want to experience a saving, you must confess. So the efficacy of your confession must be rooted. I'm not just saying confess, I am blessed, I am good, I am. No, I'm saying in rooted in the. You know, many times we joke with these matters. We are not diligent enough to search it out. You must be diligent. You know, there is something you need in your life. Oh, I want to come out with a first class. You start to search through the scripture about the spirit of excellence. You start to search through the scripture. You gather evidences. You meditate upon them. And then you speak them forth. Is somebody following me? You, you, don't, you don't shut your mouth. Because I tell you, challenges will come. Uh, you, uh, you that when you are in primary school, you are always coming last. You never collected one prize. Words will be dropping in your heart. Devil will be bombarding you left, right, and center, trying to prove to you that it's impossible for you to achieve what God has told you. And that's why you must speak. Like I said, a speaking faith is a winning faith. Now, beyond what you say, I said it, faith without works is dead. You must act in correspondence. And this is where many people miss it before they enter into their breakthrough. They have said it. I believe it. The Lord shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. 
they've said it. In fact, they roared it. But the next action they take shows unbelief. So they push it to the level of searching the word. They push it to the level of meditating upon it. They've even gathered evidences of the things that God has done before. And they've spoken the word. But rather than leave it out and begin to walk in the reality of it, they act to negate it. They start to do things in the contrary direction. He says, the word of God says, by his stripes I am healed. And then after you finish praying that prayer, ah, what do you ah, ah, ah. Somebody, you know what, you see what Peter and John did at the beautiful gate amazes me. Peter walked to the beautiful gate and they saw this man who has been crippled from birth and he says to him, oh boy, we have nothing else to give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. They could have said that and just entered the temple. What did Peter do? He, he, he made sure to perform an action. There is no faith. Faith must have a corresponding action. If you say, I believe, I believe, then you must be walking towards what you believe. Abraham, that is what was accounted to Abraham as faith. Because God just spoke a word and he was walking towards what he believed in. So if you say, I believe, I believe, and you are not progressing, actively moving towards what you believe, then there is no conviction in your heart about what you believe. About what you believe. So these actions that you take, they will be, you know, as the word of God is coming, and this is the way the Lord does it, he begins to give you instructions. Uh, oh, okay, do this one. Do it this way. Use this way. And uh, the level of your faith will determine how you obey those instructions. And as you obey those instructions, act in them, you begin to produce results. So it becomes as if the supernatural is a cheap thing. People will begin to wonder, Baolo Shenshe, how come? How is this person achieving it? How is this person going through this? How is this person going? Are we not in this same economy? They are able to lay hold on the word of God and they obey it. They act upon it swiftly. So the strength of your obedience is dependent on the strength of your faith. If you have weak faith, you would have staggering obedience because you don't trust God enough to do what he has said in your life. As I begin to wrap up, you must understand that God is interested in your victory. God is interested in your overcoming. This is a victory that overcomes the world, even your faith. So God has prepared the platform. But how far you would experience this victory? How far you would experience this life of abundance? How far you will go with God in what he has designed for you is dependent on the strength of your faith. Not the strength of somebody else's faith. And you know, as I was studying, God, God started to brew some warnings into my heart and it says that true faith number one and you can note this down true faith is focused on the will of god it's not an avenue to propagate our will that is where a lot of people miss it we want to enforce your will on god and so you go to the mountains to the valleys god this is the way i want it you said that it must be done and then god is just looking at you because he knows that if he does it for you that way your life may be wrecked because in his mercy he will just choose to be looking at you So this faith that we are talking about is rooted in the will of God. And that is why we use the word. The word of God shows us his will. The word of God shows us his plan. The word of God shows us his precepts. And it is not an avenue for us to do what we like. Rather, it is to, for us to be established in the will of God. While faith is transactional, God is more interested in our faith being relational. Many of us believe only because of what we want to get from God. Are you following me? We do it like garbage in, garbage out. God says I should put in faith that I will get results. So all that we believe for, all that we do with our faith is to get car, 
get house, get wife, get children, get money. But God wants to take us beyond a faith that is transactional to a faith that is relational, where we come into a total dependence on him, where we come into a perfect relationship a, in tandem with his will and his purpose for our life. That is when you begin to operate at the dimensions of great faith, where you are able to throw all of your weight on God and say, God, whichever way you like, direct my life. You know, a lot of us young people, we are used to take, 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 take. So faith is treated like an option. Faith is treated like a means to an end. But no, faith is the life. It's not a means to an end. Faith is what? Our life. Faith is our lifestyle. I said in the beginning, faith is our culture. Faith is how we live. It's not just to get something from God. It's not just to get something from God. So, God is challenging us today, SARS and Mars, that if we will see the performance, because power brings performance. Are you following me, everybody? Power brings performance. If you are going to see the performance of the things that you believe in, you must be walking in a place of deep communion with God. It's not something that happens by chance. The power of faith does not come by chance. It happens by a relationship with God. That is why somebody that is outside the system cannot enjoy what we are talking about. You must first believe that he is and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So God is calling us into a reawakened altar where we begin to dig into his word, begin to search out what has he said, what has he said, what is his plan for my life, then we lay hold on it and we begin to run by it. Those that wait upon the Lord, we must begin to wait upon the Lord, we must begin to bury our heads in the quietness of our room. To so begin to search out the word of God. If you have no other assignment, I want to give us this one. If you have a challenge in your life, this week, take, look for 10 scriptures. Oh, I need money to buy this and that. Look for 10 scriptures. Write them down. Begin to meditate on them. Begin to proclaim them. Begin to act upon them. And see if you won't get results. If you don't get results, just come and look for me anywhere you see me in church and point on my nose and say, I about me, you are a liar. It has worked for several people. It has worked for me. So I know because the word of God can never fail. Whenever he sends out his word and there is a heart to receive it, it always performs what it is sent for. So, your life is your responsibility. Your victory is your responsibility. Christ has won it all. But for you to walk in the reality of the victory that Christ has walked in, you yourself must believe. Your faith must hold on to it. Christ must come alive. His word must come alive in your spirit, man. And then you begin to walk in it. So it means that, you know, one of the things that the devil does is that he begins to implant distractions it lets us lose focus it starts to plant fear but when your conviction is solid and your faith is speaking i beg to tell you that nothing can move you and you will get your results somebody shout hallelujah so if you've not heard anything today hear this that god is interested in doing great things with your life through you but it is dependent upon you, upon your faith, upon the reality, upon the ability to lay hold on his word and begin to live by it. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Just speak to the Lord and say, Father, I'm asking that you grant me grace. To put away laziness in the study of your word. Because that's where the problem is. 
Many of us are easily tossed to and fro because we have no truth. It says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. To put away laziness, to put away weakness in the place of my study of the word. That I will be rooted and grounded in the knowledge of you. That daily I will grow and be transformed the renewing by the renewing of my mind. That your word will begin to wash upon my spirit man. And then my faith begin to bring out action. In the name of Jesus. Before I end this message, I want us to put our faith to work. So please rise up and then you just proclaim over something. What is that need in your life? Something that you need from God this morning. I won't leave here without doing that. There's something that is in the, in the center or in the corner of your heart. If you do not yet have a word, you can pick your phone. Just quickly enter Google now and look for a scripture and lay hold on it and begin to confess it over yourself. And begin to confess. Is there a need in your life? You, you, know, you are putting your personal faith into practice. This is not pastor praying for you. You declaring over yourself. If you have the word in your mouth, on your spirit, just proclaim it over that situation. Present to it the higher evidence of the word of God that does not fail. The immutable word of God. Present it to that case and say, by this word, I know I have victory. Not that I will have victory. I have it already. It is recorded in this word. Hallelujah, I have victory by this word. Make sure you are praying with all of your heart. You don't have to shout, but be intentional about it. Yes, they've told you, they've presented all the facts. They've told you this and this is the reality in the natural sense. But we operate in the heavenly sense. In a higher kingdom, greater than the systems of this world. So we are tapping into the evidence that is greater. The word of God. And we are laying it above every situation this morning. And we receive results. By this word, we receive results. Thank you, Lord. Shata kapara machine drike puni makata ligaru machine dalaba ruma sata kani makuria machine delebori mande gakuri masan deleba. Can you stretch forth your hands to the Lord and say, Father, increase my faith. Just receive grace from Him. Say, I receive grace to walk by faith I receive grace to trust the Lord for my life I receive grace come and say it for I receive grace to walk by faith over every situation in the name of Jesus Amen Brethren, we are at a point today. And I decree that as I lead you now, this week, you will experience eruption of unusual miracles. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hebrews 11 verse 7 says, Noah by faith. He received favor. He received grace. He was positioned specially. Can you say in the name of Jesus? By my faith in the Lord. I receive favor. I receive the kindness of God. After the order of Noah. In the name of Jesus. I receive favor of the Lord in every area of my life. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Verse 8 says, I'm still on Hebrew 8. I'm counting people that have survived 
and reigning life by faith. Abraham found his place in destiny. Can you say in the name of Jesus? I believe in the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Therefore, I find direction for my life in the Lord and in the covenant of his blood. In the name of Jesus. Can you pray that prayer? Come and say, we are talking about direction now. Direction in your business. Direction marital wise. Direction in your academics. Direction. God gave Abraham direction. And he became settled. He became established. Say, I receive my direction from the Lord, the God of Abraham. And I receive my settlement from the Lord of hosts. Are you saying it? You are warning. Come on, say it clearly. Let your being echo it. I receive direction for my life. I receive divine order for my step. I declare God order my staff to where my miracle is. To where my partner in life is. To where my success is. God order my life to my worthy place. Oh, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Verse 11 of Hebrew 11 says, By faith, Sarah received strength. Say, I received strength to have dominion in life. From this point of my life, I received strength to enter into the purchase possession. For my life, I receive strength to walk with God and break into his blessing, into his power, into the fullness of his glory. Is somebody praying? Come and pray that prayer. Reza Kalama. Sarah receives strength by faith. I draw strength by my faith today. And I expand to the right, to the left. I advance forward and upward. In the name of Jesus. Rene Kepo. I accomplish all of God's purpose for my life. For I'm strengthened by faith. I'm strengthened by the spirit of the Lord. I'm no longer to, going to walk in weakness. I walk in the strength of the Lord. That comes by faith. To accomplish the impossible. In the name of Jesus. Raka malabarama. Roli karuma sandele bori amaha. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Verse 21 says, Jacob, by faith. Jacob. Jacob heard the voice of God in the house of Laban. And he moved. And the Bible said Laban could not stop him. Are you there? He heard the voice of God. Move. Laban told him, I have all the power to harm you. But God has what? Has come to warn me. Don't touch him. You are going to decree now. In the name of Jesus. After the order of Jacob. Today, I walk out of depression. I walk out of stagnancy. I walk out of poverty. I walk out of frustration. I walk out of evil thoughts. And I lay hold on the purpose of God. I pursue the Lord into his blessing. In the name of Jesus. 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 Name of Jesus. Amen. Verse 23. Hebrew 11 said, by faith, Moses refused. Can you say, today in the name of Jesus, by my faith, 
in the God of Moses. I reject every plan that the devil has put in place in Nigeria over the life of Nigeria. I pick up the plan of God for my life and I declare its reality. I declare its reality in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, one of the most very serious issues about faith is found in Hebrew 11, 31 through 32. There, the Bible told us that by faith, even the harlot, hello? By faith, who helped somebody? The harlot found direction. The harlot found God's blessing. The harlot. Maybe the devil has always insulted you by your, some things in your life. And he has been condemning you. So he, sh he sh gets sh shutting you down. And you are not this. You can't pray. He keeps condemning you by faith. And harlot or a harlot found direction. Can you decree today? By my faith in the Lord, I stand tall in his glory, in his blessing, in his power. And I overcome everybody around my life. I come forth as gold in the hand of the Almighty, radiating his blessing to my generation in the name of Jesus. From today, the Lord has opened my mouth. He has given me a word. I will continue to declare it. And I will walk in the reality. In the name of Jesus. Thank you Father. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Now I decree from now. Receive the spirit of faith. From this point. From this message this morning I command. They are hand of God rest upon you Amen. to be strong Amen. and to begin to do exploit Amen. in the name of Jesus Amen. as you go under this morning's anointing I declare for a glory to the name of God no challenge on your part shall ever overcome you Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus no weapon formed against your life shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. Any tongue that rises up against you, you condemn in the name of Jesus. And so I declare, the Lord cleared the way for you. I said, the Lord cleared the way for you. I decree today that for a glory to the name of God, what you have desired to have, Five years ago, ten years ago to this point, within this week, within the period left in the month of October, I command the heaven to deliver them to you. Yes, your heads are lifted today. In the name of Jesus, angels are raised to help you. In the name of Jesus. The light of God shines upon your path. You find the way. You find direction. You find that blessing. The Lord establish you. A new breakthrough becomes your portion. And becomes a testimony for you. In the name of Jesus. I bless you today in the name of the Father. And of the Son and of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus go and win in the power of the anointing in the name of Jesus you are blessed praise the living Jesus praise the living Jesus in that attitude I want us to stretch forth our hands to the minister that has ministered God's word that the Lord will renew his strength the Lord will water